Good morning and welcome to this, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. It is an age-old question. Why is there evil in the world? In the parable of the wheat and the weeds, Jesus suggests that both grow together until the harvest. With Paul, we long for the day when all creation will be set free from bondage and suffering. Having both weeds and wheat within us, we humbly place our hope in the promise of God and from the Lord's presence, we go forth to bear the fruit of justice and mercy. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing, Blessed Be Your Name. Today the Apostle Paul says to us, When we cry, Abba, Father, it is the Spirit of God bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, 
than heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Consider the following questions. In what ways do you identify God as your loving Father? What does it mean to you that you are a child of God? As heirs, what is the inheritance we share with Christ? Loving Father, God, we praise and adore you, for you have loved us first. We praise you, for you have created us. You provide for our every real need, and you protect us. You have sent your Son, Jesus, to rescue us when we were lost and sentenced to death. And so, loving Father, we worship you this day in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is Lord over all and rules over all. Thank you for your Spirit living in us, who leads our spirit to want to praise and adore you, you today. Holy Spirit, Remove from us all that stops us from experiencing the joy of salvation. As we worship you now, clothe us with your full armour that we may know you, we are yours and may live protected from every scheme of the evil one. Thank you that you give us your truth so that we may stand with confidence Speak your truth to us today. Thank you for the gifts of righteousness that covers our hearts today. Thank you for the gospel to preach that makes us agile to live and move, serve and share this day. Thank you for faith that shields us from the attacks of the evil one. Thank you for the message of salvation that guards our minds. And above all, we thank you for your word, which declares your power to save, your dominion over all and your victory over sin, death and the devil. As we worship today, we put on your armour, knowing that Christ has won for us an eternal victory that no one can take from us. We are yours, loving Father. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour, we praise you in this moment and forever. Amen. Join in singing in the house of God.
Lord be with you. Let us pray for the spread of the gospel. Faithful God, most merciful judge, we care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. God will do just what his word promises. Today's readings will help us live this life in the hope of what is to come, knowing that God is great and we are his. May the Spirit open our eyes and ears to God's creative presence in our daily lives and open the eyes of our hearts, Jesus. The first reading comes from Isaiah 44, verses 6 to 8. God is the first and the last, the only God. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm for today is Psalm 86, verses 11 to 17. Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you. But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Yes, Lord, teach us to live with patience here on earth, confident that you will finally return, that we may be with you forever in the new heaven and the new earth. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8 beginning at verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh, to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, 
the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and by him we cry Abba Father the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children now if we are children then we are heirs heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At the end of the age, the Son of Man will send his angels and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin. Alleluia. The gospel for today is written in the gospel according to St. Matthew, reading in chapter 13, reading from verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow Good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered. Because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all that who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. 
Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for sowing good seed in the world. May your word live in us and bear fruit to your glory. Amen. Led by the Spirit, let us put to death the misdeeds of the body by confessing our sins in the presence of God and of each other. We confess to you, Almighty God, before the whole company of heaven and to each other that we have sinned in thought, word and deed by our own fault. Have mercy on us for Jesus' sake. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to eternal life. Amen. We did not receive a spirit that takes us, makes us a slave again to fear. But we received a spirit of sonship. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and forgiveness of all our sins. We are children of God and co-heirs with Christ. We now share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. The Lord's peace be with you. Amen. And we will sing, You Were in This Place. Good morning, children, and also good morning to the young people of every age. I brought along my uh, vegetable peeler today. It's a lovely green colour, isn't it? Would think you could find that anywhere. I've also brought along some of the, the scraps 
from the veggies being peeled and, and often they have to be thrown out, don't they? You know, once I threw out my vegetable peeler with the scraps. I went to the compost bin having cleaned it all out and I put it in there but my peeler went in as well. And it wasn't until I went to do some more peeling of veggies that I found out that I'd misplaced my vegetable peeler. It must have been in the compost. So I had to go out and do some searching and it wasn't just a little bin like this. No, it was the bin outside. And I had to dig through the compost. Oh, how stinky was that? Until I found my vegetable peeler. It was a bit messy. I had to take it inside and, and give it a thorough wash and scald it off to get rid of any germs so that then I could use it again to peel my veggies. Sometimes people who believe in Jesus may look just like the ones who don't believe in Jesus. Just like uh, the veggie peeler can get mixed up with some of the veggie scraps and lost, that's how it can look for people in this world. But thankfully, God knows which is which. And God is not so impatient as me to throw the good things away with that which needs to be thrown away. See, God will never throw out anyone who loves him. Even when we find ourselves surrounded by bad people, God takes care of us and protects us. And he will always come looking for us if we get lost amongst the rubbish. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us and protecting us. Help us make good decisions with our friends and always with your strength do things that are right through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And we'll join in singing Spirit of God.
Grace to you and peace from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The text today is the gospel for today, the parable of the weeds and wheat. And I'll just read the first verses of that text. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. Let us pray. Loving God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Jesus, you presented images of the kingdom of heaven, of God's rule on earth. In fact, you taught us in the Lord's Prayer to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Open us to understand these parables in ways that help us to get a clear picture of the kingdom of heaven the heavenly empire as you bring it into existence, both in this world and in that new age when heaven and earth are created anew. Speak to us through your word. Holy Spirit, help us to live and grow in this kingdom where we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, in the parable of the weeds and the wheat, Jesus compares the heavenly empire or the kingdom of heaven to a story of an enemy who sows dangerous weeds among good seeds that the landowner has planted. It's interesting to try and think about that for a while to try and understand what's this getting at. Are they about the surprising nature and power of God's reign? Or is it about invasion and contamination brought about in God's kingdom by other things? Is the parable about the contamination of good or bad things? Is contamination itself a problem or not? Or does the growth that this parable expresses depict and represent the promise or threat of the time to come? You see, Jesus' interpretation of the weeds and wheat seems to confirm that we need to look at the landowner in a positive way. The landowner seems to be someone very important, trustworthy and caring. The servants question the landowner and it suggests in that way of questioning whether the seeds were good seeds, it suggests that perhaps they were afraid of being blamed by their master for the weeds now scattered among the good plants. And yet there is some ambiguity in the whole passage concerning whether we take the side of the landowner or the enemy or whether we should be taking either side at all. You see, Jesus doesn't provide his interpretation to the crowd. He provides it to the disciples. And maybe there's more than one way to read the parable even then the description that Jesus gives. 
And I guess the biggest question that this parable raises for us is, why the heck does the landowner let the weeds and wheat grow up next to each other until the harvest? It's interesting in the parable too that the enemy comes when everyone is sleeping and sows these seeds. It's helpful to have a bit of an understanding about the seeds that are sown. You see, the seeds sown by the enemy are darnel, a type of rye grass that when it grows, only when the wheat starts to produce grain, does the rye grass become seen. It can't be distinguished from it until that point. Heads coming on, now the rye grass is different to the wheat. And you see, this rye grass has a particular problem because it produces a type of fungus that if it is harvested with the wheat and the fungus gets into the crop of wheat grain, it can make contaminate the whole crop and it becomes no good at all. So perhaps in this way with this ryegrass, it appears as though the enemy is competing with the farmer. Maybe planting those seeds to try and cut down a powerful man and bring him down to size. And does this one then represent the competition between Jesus and the Pharisees and the other opponents of Jesus that he was dealing with? Those who threatened the good seed, didn't want the good seed to grow so well or attempted to spoil the harvest? Might the enemy even be something like Jesus himself plundering the strong man? But I don't quite see that. You see, the enemy's action is stealthy and threatening. It's planning to pull down the harvest. And it's a surprise then when the householder forbids the servants of weeding out those weeds. The direction to let the wheat and weeds grow up together until harvest seems odd and strange. Only at the harvest would the weeds be collected first, bundled and burned, and then the wheat would be gathered into the barn. Makes one wonder, doesn't it? What kind of farmer is this? Does the farmer know what he is doing? Most would have the view And those of Jesus' day would have the view that a good farmer would weed out the weeds and not run any risk of having it infect the crop. You know, if we look at the popular Jewish traditional understanding of the images in this parable, the householder would simply be seen as God himself. The enemy would be seen as the devil. The servants would be the righteous. The wheat would be Israel. And the weeds would be the nations. And this parable would seem to present an image of God's judgment of the Gentiles prior to the restoration of Israel. So here you see is an image of God's kingdom coming about. The kingdom of heaven here on earth. The kingdom of heaven to take place once 
and for all. This is what Israel was looking for. This is what they were hoping for at the time Jesus was doing his ministry. They were wanting to see this cleaning out and this restoration of all things. But Jesus' description to his disciples is quite different. Jesus doesn't equate it the same way. He doesn't talk about Israel and the nations, but rather he talks about those who are children of the kingdom of heaven, those who belong to the empire of heaven. And he talks about the weeds as those who are children of the evil one. You see, this then becomes a sign of judgment against the children of Satan. And in fact, in Matthew's gospel, Matthew identifies the children of Satan as the Pharisees, the Jewish leaders, and the people of this generation, the people who follow this rule of the world, this way that the world operates, that is the expression that's taking place. So, the explanation then is that the owner who sows the seed is not God, but in set the Son of Man. The one who, who sows the seed is the one who desires to bring things right. The field is not Israel, but the field is this whole world. And the weeds are not the Gentiles, but the weeds are the children of the evil one. This is a sharp contrast. A sharp contrast between judgment and blessing. Emphasizing a division that is somehow taking place through this. The children of the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of the Father, the kingdom of eternal bliss, the empire of heaven. who follow the one who is, in fact, the hope of the nations. Follow Jesus and what he has done to make everything right. The explanation that Jesus gives does not explain the strategy of leaving the wheat and the weeds grow together until the harvest. For the disciples and for their time, apparently that was not so important. Apparently there was another message being given in this parable for it. It was, in fact, a word of certainty about what is coming and a warning about the judgment of the children of the devil, reassuring them of the redemption of the children of the heavenly empire. You see, Jesus is giving a picture here to his disciples of what was about to take place at the end of Matthew's gospel as he was taken to the cross, hung to die. There would be good seed, and not good seed. And it will be playing out and taking its effect. But the reality is that God is at work and his kingdom is taking place. The inauguration of his kingdom is actually taking place on the cross. That's when the kingdom of heaven starts to come into this world. And it's still taking place to this day. 
The kingdom of heaven is still coming into this world today as we live and gather around God's word in prayer and care for one another. In the church here, this is in fact taking place today. Typically, you see, this parable of the weeds and wheat has often been used to be a warning to the church. The warning goes something like this. The devil is at work in the world, seeking to undermine the ministry of Jesus and the church. The church is a mixed body, including both saints and sinners. In fact, Luther would go further to say every Christian is a mixed body, including both saint and sinner. Simul justus et peccato. And members of the church are not to execute judgment upon each other, but to wait for God's angels to sort the good from the bad in the final judgment allowing wheat and weeds to grow up together, symbolizing God's grace for all, giving time for change to take place. But do you notice the mixed results that Jesus is showing of the kingdom produced? The kingdom is a gift. The kingdom is the gift that Jesus himself has given. He sows the seeds of love and grace and mercy. He sows the seeds to bring things right and produce the right. In fact, we can see these seeds being sown inside of us as well with the responses we make to his gifts of grace and his invitations to us to consider which way to go. You see, the parables are all about signs. Pointers to the truth. Pointers to his love and grace and mercy. And pointers away from that which would draw us away from Christ. Yet no one, not even the disciples in this explanation and the parables, had a clear understanding of the right interpretation of the parable. It is not, you see, a right interpretation of the parable that distinguishes disciples and true followers of Jesus but it's enduring obedience. It's a steady trust. It's ex active, moving and living the way that Jesus calls. It's resilient witness in this world to the truth of God's love in Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection. You see... That does not clearly perceive the signs of God's power. That misidentifies the signs. That refuses to admit or conform to the rule of God's evidence in the Messiah and Christ. That is what draws us away from Jesus. How can we bear witness to Christ's lordship in this world without being arrogant or somehow thinking that we've got it all worked out? We need to be expressing trust in the Son of Man, in Jesus himself and the seed he sows. 
We need to learn to walk in step with the Holy Spirit and discern that changing and that restoration that needs to take place. We need to follow the works of God himself in this world. Trusting him and relying on him. The truth is that in the end, the kingdom will be established. It is already taking place. The kingdom is already taking place while the weeds and the wheat are dwelling together in the field. Let anyone who has ears listen. Hear and respond to God's grace and live within it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Now let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we sing Rock of Ages. Thank you to all who have been supporting us through this time and especially in this time that we are closed down even more. We recognise that this is a time in which in Victoria we've been experiencing, particularly in Melbourne, increases in COVID-19 cases. And so in our prayers we remember 
all of those who are dealing with that and working with it. We remember particularly those medical staff, those in essential services who are experiencing these things. And we remember those who are in the area of education here, particularly in schools who are meant to be running again in that way with some live students and some in remote learning. But even amidst all of that struggle and uncertainty, we also remember the gifts that Jesus gives us, that God's gifts to us continue to be given to us and we continue to receive his grace and mercy. So let us hear a prayer of offering today. We thank you, Lord, for giving us your spirit and making us your very own. Help us to live as your children day by day among those around us and for those that we can care for. Keep us faithful, Lord, serving you as we serve other people with your grace and mercy. Amen. God has given us his spirit, and by the spirit we pray to him as our father. So let us bring our requests to God. Almighty God and creator, father of our Lord Jesus Christ, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We praise and thank you for making and upholding all things day by day. For our bodies and minds, with all their powers, for food and clothing, home and family, daily work and all we need from day to day, we give you thanks. Open our eyes and ears to your creative presence in our daily lives, and open our eyes, the eyes of our hearts, to your Son through your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for your new creation, your church, the body of your Son, in whom we receive grace and mercy. Bless and protect your church throughout the world. Enable your church to preach the gospel in all its truth, unhindered to all people. Equip each of us to live as your children with joy, strength, and wisdom. Equip the leaders of our church. And today we commend to you our Bishop John and our District Bishop Lester. By your Holy Spirit, enable them to carry out their calling with joy, strength and wisdom. We also pray for the Box Hill congregation this week. We pray for their pastor, Neville, the lay workers, Kathy, Melissa, Jane, Phoebe, Stephanie, Karen, Karen, and Stephanie. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for ordering our country and society by means of our government and elected leaders. Bless those in positions of responsibility that they may willingly strive for truth and justice and so be your instruments of care and protection. We particularly pray that they would continue to grant freedom to religious expression 
so that the church may publicly declare that there is no salvation apart from your son, Jesus Christ. At this time, we pray especially that our government plan, government's plans for combating COVID-19 will be blessed by your gracious care and direction. Lord, in this time, we pray for their wisdom and for all medical advice to be followed and worked through in the best possible way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your healing and peace to all we know who are unwell or undergoing medical treatment. Today we commit to you Cecil, Scott, Ben, Adam, Helen, Gebhard, Leanne, Pam, Glenda, Terry, Diana, Thad, Eric, and any others. And we pray especially for their family and friends who care for them and support them through this time for recovery. Watch over them. Give them confidence in your good and gracious will for them. Guide all surgeons, doctors, nurses, and other health professionals who care for them. In Victoria at this time, we pray also for the increased number of people suffering with coronavirus. Lord, be with all of those, and especially with those who are hospitalised and those who are in intensive care. Care for those first responders and those people caring for them. Protect them from this virus as well. At the same time, Lord, we celebrate with the gift of new life, with the birth of Harry. Be with him and the hospital care that he undergoes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our care, our prayer. Graciously protect us from fire and flood, from war and disease, from famine and strife, and from every kind of disaster. Be with all widows and widowers, and provide for all children who have lost their parents. Comfort those who are lonely, and those who mourn the loss of loved ones. You are the God of life. And those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving those who have parted from us. And we pray especially for Mary's families and friends at the loss of Mary. And we also pray for students and staff of Suzanne Corey College with the death of one of their Year 12 students. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Support all people in their proper vocation, particularly those who are overworked and those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Help all those who are unemployed and underemployed to find suitable work. Bless our arts and culture, our science and technology. And at this time, Lord, we pray especially for those who are feeling restricted and isolated because of the lockdowns with coronavirus. We think of this in our own community and also we recognise it globally. 
Lord, give restoration and hope to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, hear us, your children, as we bring our prayers to you. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray together the prayer that he gave us, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Live and grow as children of God's kingdom. You belong to him now and always. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. We have two choices for our final song today. Your name is Power by Rent Collective, or Word of God by Vertical Church. God bless you and have a wonderful week.